it's for me, which is a very special occasion. And uh, part of it is uh, to be with uh, my friends. And I did not say this lightly at all, because that has been uh, in my heart with me uh, from the start. My very first engagement in the early 70s uh, was um, at a cat meeting in Boston. Uh, I've been with you guys ever since. The other special occasion is been 60 years. 60 years, I can't believe it. Uh, since I came to America. <laughs> Last Wednesday, 60 years. It's amazing. Uh, when I was a little uh, boy, uh, I lived basically in uh, a cage prison of the communism um, because if you wanted to go from one part of uh, Budapest in Hungary to another district, uh, if you wanted to cross the street, you had to register with, with the secret police. Not for me to go to any county of the border. It, it was my only kind of going beyond that fence, you know, to kind of being beyond that confinement uh, was the children's books that my mother read to me. And uh, my favorite books uh, were books about the sea, the ocean, uh, which of course if we had the new day, which is not quite <laughs> uh, but um, I've never seen the ocean. It's something that I was so beautiful books, and she, my mother uh, worked for the Save Publishing Company, and she always wanted to follow me. The best book she could find on the sea and the ocean. So anyway, long story short, we came to America, and uh, the International Rescue Committee uh, settled us in Brooklyn, New York. In Brooklyn, New York. Uh, in a place called Brighton Beach. Anybody heard of Brighton Beach? <coughs> when was near the ocean? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> the ocean. Amazing. And my fondest memories, actually, although I didn't speak English, um, is a friend of mine, an American friend of mine, who um, spent countless hours with me just roaming the beach. And became, of course, uh, during the winter, not to hide it swimming season, and we walked along the beach, couldn't really speak to each other in a gesture, and uh, uh, we had an interesting relationship. Uh, but we walked along the beach, and uh, we were kind of prospecting, and finding things, and through finding things, and unearthing things, and, and picking up things, and pocketing things, um, we had this kinship, and uh, started uh, making things, uh, taking things home that we made, uh, sailing them in the ocean, testing them in the water, and uh, it was quite exciting. I was a little disappointed, I must tell you, I don't know why. The Atlantic Ocean was nothing like what I read in, what my mother read to me in the books. Uh, not the color, not the romance. <laughs> Not some friends. Anyway, it, it was, <laughs> and to add to the dilemma, uh, it was during the winter where the parks department people were uh, not, not working. Uh, they were off. That was their holiday. So what it meant that on the beach where these old gentlemen, elderly gentlemen, I should say old, elderly gentlemen, who uh, were prospecting with metal detectors. So it was, see, they're looking for treasures, and we were looking for treasures. It's a different kind of mentality, a different kind of treasures, but still, uh, we were both treasure seekers, and the beach was, well, it was dirty, <laughs> it was a mess. Nobody cleaned up, you can imagine you know, what it looked like. Uh, but that part of it was not a disappointment. Maybe the color of the water was, it was 
a dream for a child, uh, which is similar after World War II when I walked around the streets of Budapest and finding you know, all bearings and all kinds of parts and all kinds of things. I used to make scooters and build things because it had a lot of the construction of war, which really became my toys. I could, I could build and make things and all kinds of things that was strewn all over the street. So about the beach kind of reminded me of that. And I brought that spirit to play with my Dennis, by the way, Dennis Chalk. Um, you may have seen some of his pictures. He's a well photographer. We ended up going to art school together. And we still talk about that. Every full conversation with Dennis starts with, remember, you know, remember this object, and we build this, you know. <laughs> and uh, so we really got this sort of close together. But it, it was a, an incredible place.
could contain those things that they're going through. And some are hidden. Uh, I just put a little cover on it so they have to go into there and look through it in a little closet. Um, I pulled it out from the back. A uh, little closet, you can go in there and look for it. That, that makes the, the search a little bit special. It's like this very special birthday present that you're going to look for. Um, the trash can, I hide things in the trash can. And we look, we look for the trash can. Um, your pockets. It's, it's, it's looking for the, the adventure of the search. What did you find? What did you come up with? What are you thinking of? What's going to happen to this? So this transformation is a very personal one. And it cannot be taken over by another artist. So you have to understand the role of the artist in the class, the role of the teacher artist in the class, and the role of the student artist. And the, ultimately, we all agree on one thing, which is that our teaching is to help kids to become their own art teachers, right? I mean, that they get function of their own at one point. Now, the longer you postpone that, you go to middle school, high school, college, you know, when my students come to me, they have one class, and they get them and study for a couple of years. I say, oh, here's my form. Would you fill it out for me? What would you like me to do? So art, what we're teaching is to influence sounds. And that has to start very early. When you respect their ideas, you respect the things that they bring to you, that they show you, that they talk about. So so much of art teaching is listening. And knowing who the style of the show is. Um, anyway, getting back to Dennis, which um, I have these lovely conversations with. And we walked around Brighton Beach, and we found things, and um, we played with them. Now, we didn't bring, I must tell you, we didn't bring staplers. Another one comes, you know. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should plug it in, anyway. It's a long cord, you know. Um, we didn't uh, bring tape. Uh, so but we, we found things, we tried to construct, and, and Sometimes we found gems and jewels that we kept, and we had displays of them in our, in our home. This was our special art, our kids collecting rocks. But then other things we put together. And of course, the ocean was always there as self instructions if you want to start doing something that flows. So I would uh, ask you to see if you can just kind of, you know, this is our little celebration. So we're back in Brighton Beach. And uh, see if you can find some of these things that we find exciting, what, what we find interesting. See if you can play with it. Uh, in our class, I was always happy to do say words and all these things that we have to display with things. And all those uh, pieces and art movements and so forth uh, can come later. Is that always going to be the first time you have those impressions? And it's okay. Now, there are also uh, sites around the room that I like kids always, uh, my students always do, to shop for themselves. Because what you find, what you brought in today, is special. And there's nothing that the key teacher can bring in, or sex, art supply, or whatever it is, art supply stores, or uh, catalogs mm -hmm. they give you, that will be ever the same. So when a child brings in something to your class, that comes package with great ideas, and that will always be a better one. So, always, always consider that. So, uh, please have fun. You're starting already, which is wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> please. So, have fun. And uh, I don't if you don't mind, I don't have a microphone, but I don't even think you're talking body you want to do. But any time that you would like, and you would like to shop it up,
<laughs> two things I don't like, name tags and microphones. Anyway, um, <clears throat> there are so many things I want to tell you, which is really frustrating, but uh, please uh, write to me, email me. I, I will answer, and I, my daughter will tell you, I answer all my emails. And uh, so, and uh, if you go to the play-based art teaching site, you will see many of the things that we do here. I post everything we do with the kids, and it's a Facebook site, play-based art teaching Facebook site. What I would like to tell you, yes, play-based art teaching, play-based art teaching. You will see everything we do every week, and it's always different things in different areas, whatever the kids are involved in, and lots of great things. Not just from me, but all of the teachers all over the world. Uh, anyway, okay. Uh, I, I watched the, uh, nothing political, I watched the uh, State of the Union message. And uh, President Obama said uh, the first time, you know, we need a country of innovators and we need a country of taking my life. You see, you see, he wants more art teachers. <laughs> I want to listen, you know, leave me alone. I <laughs> So this went on because four times he said it. Four times he said, we need a nation of innovators, okay? A nation of innovators, that's we, that's not steam, stem, uh, coal, or whatever they call it. <laughs> we are the, you know. Okay. So our teaching is about innovation. Put up a sign in your, in your door. Many teachers are starting to do this. The art room is the center of innovation. Very important. And this is the innovation. We know that art is innovation. We know that art is innovation. But as one of my kids, uh, I think it was a fifth or fourth grade, he says to me, he says, you know, art is very selfish. <laughs> what do you mean? He said, well, it, it's self-expression. And this is the view of society. You want to be self-expressive, go at home, go home and do it. Do it after school, do it. be self-expressive. Especially we've been blessed but accursed at the same time by abstract art, where we removed the audience, we removed our support. So as nation of innovators, <laughs> now our history as art educators, don't ever forget our history as art educators started because America needed designers in furnishings, in, in uh, jewelry, <laughs> every field. So there was money in, poured into the um, original art uh, education uh, uh, system and um, slowly we became, we drifted away from that. I'm a painter, I will never say don't teach drawing and painting, but set up your class for innovation. Every class, every student in your class is an innovator. Yes, they are when they're doing painting, but we are our, our principals and our communities don't really understand that. But they understand innovation. So declare yourself as the teacher who creates innovation, who works innovation. And all the things that other te other schools hands-on things, you know, you have a lot of technology now. You need art more than ever to do, to build. This is the whole thing, the whole buildings and, and um, a handmade movement, which is uh, really a very important movement across the country. Uh, we, this is us. We do the things that the country wants, but we have to face it a different way. And um, so I, I would, um, this is really an example of working <laughs> with an innovator. And there are, there are many, many other things that uh, I'm sure you do in class right now. The robots you build, the, the, uh, um, the watches, the, the, um, the new shoes that you design, the new fashion that you design with kids. These are all innovations. Um, designing cell phones. Take any of these objects. Let's now design cell phones from any of these objects. Let the kids demonstrate how their new cell phones work. Just what, what's here. You can even test it in water. Waterproof. 
you know? This, this, this is uh, something that uh, will capture the, the uh, notice of, of the school, your principal. And um, so this idea, yes, you know, we still hold to the idea of painting and drawing, still very important, but um, you're teaching innovation, you're teaching innovators and designers. And um, this does not have to interfere with your painting or, or anything else because um, it's, it's still sculpture. You, you, you're designing living rooms, chairs, you're designing couches, you're designing um, doll beds. Uh, all, of, all of these um, are uh, sculptures. And children's first sculptures really are dolls and play figures. So when, you build, when you're creating dolls, you're designing the first sculpture of children. Um, this painting, everything that uh, you created now uh, can have, when you make a painting of what you just done or a drawing of what you have done, I will guarantee you in writing that they will be a thousand times better than if you just told the kids to draw ships or, you know, they have the understanding, they have, and most important, the confidence now having built these things to make great drawings, fantastic drawings of what you just built, or fantastic paintings or prints of what you just built. So start with the three-dimensional. Start with the building and constructing. And then go to, if you, if you, if you uh, want, if want to still paint and draw, which you should, of course. But at the same time, some of these things can be pulled from the water, and you can, these are three-dimensional canvases. Um, the other thing is be yourself. You are under incredible pressure today. I am myself in college. It's not different. Our state, I can't even do my own syllabus today. The state does my syllabus. This, it's disgraceful and disgusting what's happening. So I fully say, I understand what you're going through. But you know yourself what a great art program is. You know what the kids need. And it's not just a matter of tab or, or, or you know, Sakelli's play-based method or this method. It, art teaching is art. You build your own art teaching. You develop your own method of art teaching. And you must trust yourself because today the society, principals, other people don't trust you. Therefore, we don't, of course, trust the kids. But in art teaching, if you don't trust the kids, then you give them every instruction and point and how to do and show it to them on the board and so forth. But they, you know, you, so I understand you're not trusted, but you have to have incredible self-confidence, close that door and teach art the way you think is best. Understand what you want to teach yourself and teach it, and don't worry about somebody doing it differently, and you know, in school arts, you know, showing you this way or that way. Uh, you wouldn't approach your own art that way. You don't go to a museum and say, oh, I like that, you know, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> no, I'm gonna take a workshop on that, I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. You know how important being independent it is and as an artist. So you've got to treat teaching the same way. It's your art. Don't feel guilty that you're not painting every day. You are making art every day in your own classroom. You are being inspired by artists every day. It's incredibly valuable to yourself, and you must treat yourself well also. So um, like in conclusion, it's just... Um, it, it's still a field that I would want to do again, and it's still a, a good field. I, I know that you know things have really gotten out of hand, you know, with this, this uh, standards and so forth. My, if, if anybody here is from NAA, please close your ears. <laughs> um, but there'll be other things, you know. If if you w go through the you know 47, 48 years, I don't know teaching that I have. You know, we, we went through standards and DBA and CBA and Q, QBA and, you know, <laughs> and if it all comes from education, somebody does their dissertation, now it's coming from the Harvard School of Business, they all know better than you how to teach art. 
It's disgusting. You are not just another teacher in the school. You are special people, each one of you. You're artists. So bring yourself as an artist to school and invent art education. Invent art education. Don't look to someone else to invent your painting. Don't look to someone else to invent your art education. I, to, I, I know I'm up. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, <laughs> all right. Um, I immensely enjoyed working with you. Uh, I, I think that this is a great organization and I hope it, it continues for a long time. Um, I, uh, these are many ways to save your work, obviously. Um, one of the things I uh, joke with the kids, but I talk to them about teaching, that I really teach toy making I don't know. This is their sculpture. Things they can pull, things they can push, things that have wheels, things they can play with at home. Not things that go in the refrigerator and then dad or mom somehow makes it, you know, disappear. <laughs> uh, art that's made to last, that means something to them. And as I said, the, um, the play things for their play figures, all kinds of, of, of play things that, you make, that they're making. And then, of course, we want to make it well that they're playable. There's a wonderful train here. Uh, there was a um, uh, fire engine there. This is what kids want to make. So let them build it. Let them make it, build it well. Let them last a lifetime. So it's not refrigerator or disposable or things that they stick in their backpacks, you know, and they you know, <laughs> come on, try, try to iron it, you know. Uh, so, um, okay. Um, I hope you will want to save some of these. These are, these are magnificent pieces. We, all, we have cameras. At least take a picture. If nothing else, please take a picture. And, um, you know, it would be nice. I would very much appreciate it. Why don't, if you would put it, I would be happy to put every single one of these on the play and art site. So if you take a picture, please send it to me. I'll do it right away, as soon as I get home. The Play and Art side. Facebook, play, and, uh, uh, play, play based art teaching. Ilona will show you. Play, play and art teaching? <laughs> yes. She talked me into getting seven different sites. So it's a play based art teaching. OK. Art teaching, yes. Yes. Uh, if you, as a present, if you want to take home any of the leftovers and continue building, please take that. If not, just help us uh, clean up. And thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great conference.